Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Carolina Conversation. I'm your host, Shimon Williams. And today we have one of the great Tar Heels with us. I mean, the young man is one of the, the greatest young players to ever play at the University of North Carolina. He hails from Charlotte, North Carolina, 2013 McDonald's All-American. He is also uh, an All-ACC Freshman of the Year player. He was also a 2017 national champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I have with me today none other than the Kennedy Meeks. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, What's going on, Kennedy? How you doing, man? How you doing? Good. Feeling, man. You know, being a dad, growing. Yes. Well, let's talk about those things. But first and foremost, I want to say I appreciate you taking the time to be here on the Carolina Conversation. Of course. I you told know, you. It's, it's, it's hard getting those champions, man. You know, no. the champions got so much well, not going me. on. Nobody, everybody else, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> but, hey, man, uh, I want to say thank you. And, uh, you know, let everybody know, man, like you said, being a, being a father, man, how, how are things going for you, man? Let's talk about let's talk about life today for you. Yeah, Um. well... Um, most people know that I tore my Achilles about eight months ago, so um, right. I've been recovering from that. Right, I'm about, about three months out from back being back playing, so um, yeah. just remain positive and knock this physical therapy out because that's the most important thing right now. Um, no question. You know, being a dad with that um, isn't easy, but you know, she teaches me so much every day. So um, I learn from her from her more than she learns from me sometimes. So. Uh huh. Like, hey, life changes a lot when we when we start having those children, man, and and uh, it gives you some perspective, huh? Yeah. Great perspective. <laughs> yeah. I never thought I would be doing, you know. So that, it's cool to be a part of for sure. Yeah, congratulations, man, and 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 I, I know that uh, your 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 rehab will go well. I mean, you you were having a great uh, a great season out there in in France. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. you know, France is a great place. Uh, for me, that's one place I always wanted to play. I never got a chance to play there, but I would go and visit MACTAW a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But I, I really love the French League. Uh, it's really a great league. Yeah. Um, but um, but also, man, you you have some other things that you, you have you have going on or had going on uh, with, with things outside of basketball as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's uh, talk well, about that for a minute. Well, um, one of my dreams has always been to make music and um, give pe people a different perspective on my life other than basketball, you know, because that's important to me. Um, I don't right. know if for playing basketball. I want to be known for other things as well. So That's right. It's just one of my things, that, one of the things that I wanted to take on, you know, my family. My dad and granddad um, were musically inclined growing up and stuff, so I've always been around it and um, I just saw the opportunity for uh, me when I had a chance to uh, work on my recovery and stuff to take advantage of it. And I dropped the album and um, it's, it's doing pretty good right now. It's on all streaming platforms. Um, it's called West Side Heartbreak. So it's it's, yeah. it's it's up right now. So, yeah, 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 no question, man. It's interesting. It's interesting because, you know, you and I do share the number three. You know, yeah. we do share the number three. Yeah. Um, you did do me one better by getting the national championship. You know what I mean? So I ain't hey, mad at that. Hey, long man, as it, you, hey, you uh, had them threes on lock, man. Hey, hey well, you know, <laughs> hey, hey, for me, if, if, if the younger brother can do better than me, I'm I'm all with it. You dig hey, what I'm saying? But we know as long as we know three is your number, man. <laughs> nah, three hey, is your number. It's like in Friday. It's ours. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I bargain. You just keep it at your house. <laughs> <laughs> but it's ours. Yeah. Uh, but but also, man, um, I, I, I was musically inclined myself. I'm musically inclined myself. I, I studied at, uh, um, I was a musician myself. Um, actually, I had no scholarship offers to go to college for basketball, but I had scholarships I could go to college um, as a musician. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was an all-state percussionist uh, since I was in seventh grade, and uh, I was one of the first kids to be able to go to the fine arts school in uh in in where I'm from um, as a ninth grader. And so mm -hmm. I've studied music my whole life, um, and uh, you know it, it's great to to hear and know that you have 
music behind you. And I'm like, my goodness, we, we have really more in common than just, you know, it's, it's a reason why he picked the number three. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So maybe, maybe, you know, maybe one day we, we, we'll all have an opportunity to do something musically. I mean, we, we do have Quentin Thomas, who's also uh, musically inclined. Um, Dex, 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 Dex sing a little bit. Huh? I yeah, said, Dex, 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 sing a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We used to we used to mess around a little bit when we was in college yeah. together, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. Um, but uh, you know, it's great that people get to see things uh about you other than just the basketball. Exactly. And uh, and really it says a lot about your personality as well. Mm -hmm. Um, because uh being a musician, you have a, a, a melodic um you know, melodic soul. And so that 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 allows you to handle people certain ways as well and so exactly. you know that's that's why a lot of people do have you as one of the hey one of the top five uh, uh gentlemen that ever played at the university of north carolina because of just the, you know the person you are and you can always tell by how we were raised too you know it's 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 not hard to see by you know the way that your family your family my family raised mm -hmm. us to become who we are today you know and, and try to be as respectable as we can so that's no the question. most important thing so no question. No question. Yeah. It, it talks about your selflessness. But but we're going to put this thing back. We're going to rewind the hands of time. We're going to back it up, back it up, back it up. Now, being one of the greatest basketball players in the country, you know, in 2013, McDonald's All-American, you know, mm -hmm. just, just that dude, what made Kennedy Meeks choose the University of North Carolina? Well, um, Aside from me being from Charlotte and, you know, always seeing them on TV, the games are always playing in the house growing up. And, you know, my family always kept me around basketball. Um, but I would say when I went on my visit, as far as like just being around the guys and walking into the Dean Smith Center and playing pickup and, you know, just being a part of Carolina for that day, those two days, however long it was, um, it made me feel right at home. My family loved it, you know. Um, it was a, a different look for us because we were kind of leaning towards Georgetown at first, um, mm -hmm. John Thompson, um, just because of the, the reputation for big man and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I slept on it and I woke up uh, the next day and um, I made the decision because, you know, I wanted to put myself in the best position I could um, for my future professionally um, as well, um, not just in college, but, you know, um, professionally as well because um, that's our that's what we do it for you know to try to reach the greatest heights that we can. Um, right. My family education has always been first, you know, so um, it's definitely not a bad school to go to for academics. That's well. right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. I think I think a lot of people um, when you know, especially when you're athletes and or people love sports, they don't understand the magnitude of the academics when you go to University of North Carolina. Um, you got to do the work, man. Ain't, ain't no despite question. What they say, despite what they say, you got to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, and a lot of times it gets brushed under the rug of mm. the academic responsibility and and the, you know, the notoriety of the institution itself as an <laughs> academic institution. Exactly. So that, that's great that you were able to understand the magnitude of that decision beyond just basketball mm -hmm. and understanding how it would prepare you, um, you know, beyond basketball. Because we all know, hey, basketball is going to stop one day, voluntary or involuntary. And so what exactly. but what have you done or what decisions have you made to put yourself in a position that you can reap the rewards of your your uh your work um mm -hmm. academically as well so that's yeah. that's that's kudos to you and your family having yeah, that in, insight and perspective yeah, um, you know you were one of many great players to come from West Charlotte mm -hmm. um you know Jeff McInnes who I played with uh oh, played at West Charlotte um yep. chose the University of North Carolina uh one of my close friends who I, who I, I frequent with a lot here in uh the Norfolk area uh, you know he didn't choose North Carolina, but he went to West Charlotte Junior Burroughs. Yeah. Uh, and then, uh, you know, oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Virginia guy. And, uh, you know, and uh, I spent some time working with Pat Williams as well. So you come from a great high school. You can't school. forget Jason Parker either. Yeah, Parker. Now, yeah. you know, like, Parker's one of the dudes. I keep forgetting about Parker. Parker's one <laughs> of the guys, man. 
I don't know what was going on, but, you know, I knew that he was going to come to Carolina because he went to Fork Union as well. Wow, mm-hmm. he went to mm-hmm. Fork Union as well. And, um, you know, um, you know, Carolina, that's one we we, we, we missed on. I, I don't know what happened. He was prepared. He had committed. You know, I, I you know, I just, I, I feel like I dropped the ball on that. <laughs> you know what I mean? East, East, East mode. Yes, yes. All game. Parker, Parker was that guy. And, uh, you know, I, like I said, I, I don't know the background of what happened, but um, I know that he was a Carolina guy, and mm-hmm. you know, and 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 that's what he wanted to do, and his family, and unfortunately, it didn't work out, and we, we lost one with that one. Great yeah. person too, great yeah. person, yeah. great person, great person. And so, so making the choice to go to the University of North Carolina when you cho- when you chose North Carolina, I mean, I know you were a McDonald's All American, you were one of the best players in the country. When you made the decision to go to North Carolina, did you notice things change? Did anything change? Like, you know, like did it? You know, like now when you start moving around, yeah. You know, I would, you know, I would definitely, superstar status. I would definitely say it heightened for sure. You know, <laughs> especially around locally. You know, yes, because um, not everybody gets a chance to watch basketball. So when they read the newspapers and see you all the time. It's a lot different, you know. You start noticing people being a lot nicer, <laughs> stay in the gym a lot longer, you know. Right. So, um, you definitely notice and you definitely uh realize the impact that Carolina has on people's lives, you know, because we got fans literally everywhere. everywhere. Like not even kidding, not even not everybody can say that, you know. Not That's even right. Duke, Duke fans, nobody can really say that. That's it's right. a lot of fans every, every place in in this world. So it's yes. pretty cool to be a part of, you know. So yeah. And so tell me about your first day getting to campus in the summertime. You know, you come for the summer, you know, you come in to do summer school and, you know, tell me what was your first experience, you know, hitting campus and, and then get down there to play a little pickup. Or what? You know, how yeah. was your first day, your first experience getting to campus? Well, I think the, the biggest thing is um, I was ready to um, take that next step as a player, you know, I knew that I was going to have to, it was going to be the hardest um, work that I would have to put in um, as far as basketball. Um, so I had to take it among myself to, uh, from day one, to just try to be the best as I can. Um, of course, everybody isn't um, going to be flawless in those um, adventures, but I think that I did the best I could. I think that Jonas put me in the best position that he could for us to succeed. Um mm-hmm all of us as a team. So, um, but that first, that first day was scary. Um, you know, especially coming from the neighborhood I'm from, you know, my high school's predominantly black, literally like 97% black and right. all, all day. So, um, transition to Carolina definitely gave me a, um, different outlook on life and got it, gave me a chance to meet new people and people of different skin colors that are still my friends to today that helped me along the way, um, mental, mentally, physically, you know. So um, it's definitely um, the best decision I ever made in my life as far as um, taking a, a different route with, with the way I want my life to go. So. No question. Uh, no, it's no doubt about it. Uh, the University of North Carolina, for a lot of us, you know, like a lot of times, you know, people, when you talk about cultural shock, um, it could give you a little shock depending on, you know, the environment that you come from. Sure. And um, and it it challenges you to think outside the box. It challenges mm-hmm. you to to be and understand that it's bigger than what you've seen previously. Yeah. Um. But but it's also good to do with the type of you know the type of people that the University of North Carolina uh, uh, acquires um, mm-hmm. through their you know through their process of uh, you know. Uh, picking you know who the freshmen are going to be and so on and so yep. forth so they do a good job of diversifying uh the environment and uh you know it it helps us a great deal um um that's 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 really interesting for you to say that because i think back you know i went to fork Union military academy so that kind of changed things but being in north carolina you know allowed me to develop relationships that i more than likely would have never never uh, ever established exactly. yeah so that's 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 duly noted man great great point um so how was the basketball you know being a freshman hitting campus yeah. you know in the summertime i mean a lot of people come to north carolina to play 
you mm-hmm. know, play the pickup game in the summertime. You know, how how was that introduction? I mean, I mean, you know how it is with you, when we're playing with you. So <laughs> is that, if that's why you're saying it, then yes. No, well, you definitely – you definitely turned us into animals. <laughs> when it came to the <laughs> pick, it's ruthless, you know, it's ruthless. <laughs> and that's how it has to be, you know, because everybody wants to beat us, literally everybody. I don't care what time of day it is, at what point of the season, everybody wants to beat us. And they're going to give us our best shot every time. So um, shout out to you and all the OGs for, you know, putting us on y'all back because not every school has that. Not every school has those guys who reach back and have an opportunity to um, come to the gym whenever we want. You know, that joint is open 24 hours. Yeah. As long as you got that code. Um, so you guys have helped us out tremendously. And um, I know you don't, y'all got, y'all don't get enough credit for that, but y'all definitely changed the game for Carolina. So, well, you know, the thing about it is uh, a lot of times when, you know, I, I interview you guys, because, a lot of people only get to see you just from, you know, the, the standpoint of Kennedy makes the basketball player. I mean, mm-hmm. they love everything that you've offered as a as a player. Exactly. And so they don't get to hear, you know, the things that you encounter. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, it's really not about me. It's good. It's about, you know, it's about me doing my part. And guess what? When exactly. you graduated, you were doing the same thing. <laughs> you know exactly what I mean? Right. So it's, off, of it's, instinct, off of the instinct, just because that's what <laughs> y'all instill. That's just like having parents, you know, they teach you along the way. And when it's your turn, you got to do the same thing. So got to do the same thing. Exactly. And so, you know, for, you know, like now that you're in that position and you do it, you know, mm-hmm. it's like you get an understanding of what it feels like for us. You yeah. Know, you know, when you first get it, it's like, man, they, you know, like they trip you. They tripped me. <laughs> you know what I mean? well, looking back, man, well, looking back, I'm like, man, I, I know exactly what they mean. Like, you got to you gotta have that intensity every play. You got to want it. You got to – and not only for the name on the back of our jerseys, you know, it's for the front, too, because that's where we elected to play, you know. So that's yeah. that's just as important as the name on the back as well. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, now – uh, you know, seeing your success and, and, and watching you and you becoming a professional and, and mm-hmm. becoming a parent, you know, like the things that, you know, the, you know, the thing that I always harped on was, hey, man, you know, I I want you to get it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if anybody win, I want you to win. You know yeah. what I mean? And, sure. and, and, and a lot of times, a lot of times it can be taken the wrong way. But I always it's like now with anything. I always know, hey, you know what? Eventually, it's going to come to a point they're going to understand, like, I understand what they were saying or I appreciate what they were saying because, you know, like, I wanted North Carolina to win. There's no doubt about that. But I wanted Kennedy Meeks to win as well. You know what I mean? Like, like that. you know, everybody can win in this. It don't have to be just Just. Kennedy Meeks win or just University of North Carolina win. No, no. Everybody can win in this. Everybody can get what they're trying to get out of this. And um, you know, if if it takes and, me to, <laughs> yeah. to push you, the envelope. And you always taught us that the NBA ain't everything either, you know. That's like right. you, you make a life professionally overseas, you know. Plenty of people have done that. Why of course Joe played in the NBA, but he made a tremendous career out of himself for from playing overseas in Japan and different places. So Yeah. Um, y'all definitely taught us early that you know NBA is a special place to be, but you know it's not end all be all. It doesn't nah. mean you're not a player. That don't mean that's that right. you, you know what I'm saying. So it did not it doesn't identify your talent for sure. No. It doesn't identify your talent. And for me, you know, I tell people I I, I love Europe better than I like the NBA. Yeah, you know, for for me because mm-hmm. I you know like the music like you said musically inclined. My mindset was I needed something to challenge me mentally. You know, I had did everything in the States. I, you know? Oh, Europe changed all your rules, the rules. You got to change the whole setup, how you playing. So I know what you but Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just love the environment. So, uh, you know, uh, kudos, you know, kudos to you and, and everybody else that, you know, take, you know, like, like I said, the University of North Carolina prepares us with the cultural aspect of it that we're able to leave our culture and go and thrive in other cultures as well. Yeah. So, so how was it, how was it now knowing that you had the academic, uh, you know, 
background and understanding what do you want to do academically. How was it coming to the University of North Carolina as a freshman and 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 dealing with the academics? You know, yeah. how was that for you? How was that transition for you? Well, I think it, of course, it's uh, a lot more fast paced um, than coming from high school. You know. Um, it's a, it's an expectation that you're supposed to have as a student there. You know, you're supposed to maintain and hold your own at the school. You know, what? That's the most important thing. No parties, no none of that other stuff matters if your grades aren't right. So, um, Jen and Coach Williams and everybody helped us um, stay on top of that as far as you know, study hall and making sure that everybody has their work turned in on time. And you know, even when we sometimes have games the next day, we got to finish that work. You know, That's early right. in the morning before the games, you know, show the teachers that we really care about our academics um, before anything, because, you know, we wouldn't be at that school if our academics weren't up to par. So, right. Right. Yeah. And so also talk about that season. I mean, talk about your freshman year. You know, finally, yeah. everything has come together. You've done the summer. You've done, you know, you're doing the things you need to do academically. Now basketball is here. Mm -hmm. You know. How was it for you as a freshman at the University yes. of North Carolina? I mean, of course, like any other All-American, you come into school thinking like, man, like I know I'm about to start. I know I'm about to, you know, be the man. But like when you get to school, you realize like it's not even about that, you know. It's the team right. as first and foremost, you know, because that's what they're going to know you for. You know, if you're a good teammate, if you're selfless and that's you're right. respectful and those type of things. That was the first thing I noticed. Um, that I wasn't going to start at first. I knew I would eventually, you know, but the first 17 games I didn't start, and that was tough on me um, because I always knew that, like, you know, the, imp the the type of impact I wanted to have on college basketball, um, that I needed to start to do that, and that's not right. the case. You, know? you can make an impact coming off the bench. You can make an impact the second half of the game, first half of the game. So um, yeah. once I let that go, I wound up starting, you know, the last 17 games. And right. I, didn't, I didn't I didn't come off the bench for the rest of my career. So right. um, this is all about being patient. You know, I learned patience. I learned um, nutrition. I learned um, how important sleep is, you know, um, how important saying no is. Right. Um, because those are things that matter. You know, you can't always say yes. You can't always go to those parties. You can't always want to stay out late and, and, you know, hang out. So those are the things that I definitely noticed early on and how serious you have to take basketball up until that point, you know. Man, what a blessing, man, to be able to, you know, start as a – begin to start as a freshman and then start for the rest of your career at the University of North Carolina. Yeah. I mean – I start start to my junior year. Under, under Coach Williams, too. Under Coach Williams. <laughs> hey, man. You know, yeah. So. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot, you know, that's that's something to be said. You know, that's the type of impact that you had as a as a as a basketball player, as a freshman. And so, you know, here it is. You know, having a great season, being named to the all ACC freshman team, being a starter. You know, uh, after the first seventeen games at the University of North Carolina, you know, how was that going into your sophomore year? You know, mm -hmm. being a starter, man, like it's a lot of responsibility that comes with that. You know what yeah. I mean? Then you were a freshman, and so you know, it ain't a lot of freshmen that get a chance to say, "Hey, I started as a freshman." Exactly. And so, you know, how was the responsibility? Uh, moving forward, going into your sophomore year uh, with that team, you know, how did you feel going to your sophomore season knowing I'm, I'm a starter at the University of North Carolina? Yeah. Um, well, I wouldn't even say I, I went into a, a leadership role. Um, I feel like I was transitioning into that, you know. Um, I still had to learn some stuff about the game and our system and, you know, um, I still only had one year under my belt, so I didn't really know as much as I thought I did. Um, right. But coming into that sophomore season, I think I just wanted to ramp it up. You know, I wanted to ramp up the points. I wanted to ramp up my rebounds, my minutes, um, show people that I'm in shape and, you know, run the floor as much as I can. And I tried the best of my ability, and that's one of the best seasons I had there. So, Right. Um, I just wanted to keep it going, you know, keep stay on the high note from my freshman year. Um, you know, because in the, my, my tournament my freshman year, I played pretty good. So I just wanted to right. keep, it, keep the ball rolling. Yeah. Were were there any, you know, like 
did you feel like any point in time, you know, the leadership role changed for you? Um, because I mean, you still had Marcus, mm. um, Bryce. And, yeah, Bryce. Mm. Um, and so, you know, even though those guys, you know, were focal points offensively, a lot of times, you know, playing a role in being selfless allows you to, to have a word because you're actually giving up something for everybody else. Because, you know, yeah. like Mactar, like, you know, me and Mactar were the captains of our team and Mactar was selfless. And yeah. because he was selfless, it allowed others to be able to kind of be themselves. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of like, you know, a lot of times, you know, when Mac needed to say something, he said, it. you know, people like, I feel it because guess what? He, he giving up stuff for the sake of some exactly. of the others. You know exactly. what I mean? So did you begin to feel that, you know, that role? A little yeah. bit more with that team. I feel like um, even my from my first year, I was uh, really vocal. You know, I just wanted to, you know, have a presence in the locker room, and hopefully that will transition over to the court. So I just try to do the best I could to, you know, make sure my teammates was good, make sure the spirits was always up. Yeah. You know, just try to just try to keep it lively. You know, because um, in the past I didn't see as much as that as I did when we had got there. So um, yeah. I just wanted to, you know just be the best teammate I could be and hopefully the rest will, will fall in place. And it did, you know, my teammates trusted me um, in times that I didn't even think that they would. So um, it's just a testament to um, how we grew as brothers over those courses of four years, as far as me, Nate and Isaiah. Yeah. Well, mm. I want, I, I'm glad that you said that because that's what I was trying to allude to. Um, mm -hmm. I wanted to see what you recognize it, your personality Mm -hmm. for those teams really really stood out it did mm -hmm. um you know you you could you could turn you know uh, uh an environment that you know people were being a little solemn or, or whatever you know you could you could change it just mm -hmm. by your words and your presence and your smile and stuff mm -hmm. like that and that for me i noticed that a, a great deal like you could you could get people to move because, you know, of your personality and, and who you were as a person. Yeah. And so that for me played a big role in the success of those teams because mm -hmm. it was like if they were too down and you felt like, you know, hey, you know, you might say something, you know what I mean? Everybody, you know, but you know what? It ain't that bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you could, hey, you know, I, I know like, you know, just being around you in the summertime, you can be you like, hey. up, even if you got to cuss one of them out, you know, it's all, <laughs> yeah. it's still energy, it's still energy <laughs> transfer. So that's all I wanted to do is just, you know, even even if my teammates had to do that to me sometimes, you know, I, I try not to take it the wrong way because it's not even about that. You know, everybody's here to help each other. Everybody got the same common goal. You know, that's right. We, we could win a championship every year. I'm sure we would love that. So, yeah. And so, you know, great sophomore year, great sophomore year. And here it is, you know, some of those guys that you've been playing with, now you're becoming a junior. Mm -hmm. Those guys, Marcus and Bryce, you know, those guys, seniors. Um, mm -hmm. Going into that junior year, did you feel, did you feel how special that team could be or what you guys could do as a team? Yeah, Was of course. There... I mean, I, I just – the years we just built like such a great system with each other we knew each other we knew what each other wanted to do we know the spots that we wanted to get to we just knew you know and that was one of my toughest years because I had got injured and um mm -hmm. I was out for a couple games I think like seven or eight games and that's when Bryce had picked it back up so you know me coming back it was a little slow um mm -hmm. so that was a lot that was a lot on me that was my my worst year if you ask me as far as um, <laughs> mentally and and physically, you know, challenging myself. Um, but, you know, um, I think that that team was the, the most special team that I've been a part of as far as, like, talent-wise, just all across the board, you know. Bryce killing the game. Marcus, of course, doing what he does, you know. Uh, Joel and Justin making their impact um, as freshmen. So um, it definitely was cool to be a part of, you know. I mean, as, as sophomore. So it was definitely oh, was yeah. We had a great well, team. That 16 team was was really good. Yeah. 
And so, you know, there it is. That 16 team, you go to the final four. Yeah. You know, how was it, you know, being able to, you know, be able to put yourself in a position, you know, because you go to the final four, you put yourself in a position to win a national championship. Yeah. That's just that's just what it is. I mean, yep. you can't – you don't have a chance to win the national championship if you it's can't not, get to the final four. You, right. you got to be there. And yeah. so having an opportunity to get there and experience your first final four, you know, mm -hmm. how was that for you as a yeah. – as a player. Well, like I said, I didn't have the best year as far as for what I wanted, you know. Um, so it put things in their perspective to me. Like, maybe it's not that bad. Like, maybe I'm not playing that bad. I'm still starting. I'm still getting the minutes I want, you know. Um, just coming back from injury and we still made it here, you know. So maybe it's not that bad, you know. And I shared that with everybody on my team. And because we all had ups and downs that whole season, you know, everybody was fighting injuries. I think Marcus had hurt his hand and stuff. So it was a lot of stuff that could have kept us from getting to where we wanted to be. And it did. So, um, like I said, that loss definitely set us up for my last year, for sure. Yeah. I mean, being on the court in that game, you know, being there myself in the stands and, and uh, you know, just watching the emotion of the matter of, a minute, you know, to watch Marcus hit the shot and then to come back and watch Chris hit the shot. You know, it was like, for me, it was like, wow, because I had known Chris. I you know Chris is from South Carolina. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so I had known he and Nate. I had known them since they were young shit, kids. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, then being, you know, I'm there for us, mm -hmm. you know, and to see Marcus hit that shot, boom, it was like, wow, that's one of the greatest shots of all time in Carolina yeah. history. You know, and then then to see, you know, Chris come right back and boom, hit the shot. You know, mm -hmm. emotionally for you and being a participant participant in that, how was it? Um, honestly, you just feel like everything we worked for went down the drain, to be honest with you. You know, like it's just and, and I've really felt for our seniors because, you know, like as a as a younger player, you want to always make sure that you're taking care of your seniors. You want to make sure that they always, you know, are, are feeling good and positive and those wins make an impact on how they want to leave their career, you know. So um, losing that was tough on me for Joel, Joel, Marcus, and Bryce because, you know, those guys helped me along the way. You know, those are my big brothers. You know, they um, helped pave the way for me. Um, just like I did for the players after me. So That's right. um, I wanted them to win more than I wanted to win for myself. You know, I wanted them to go out the right way because they are still Carolina greats no matter what, you know. So, no question. Yeah. Yeah. And, and and to think about what you just said, you know, <laughs> they're probably one of the, the most talented teams that, you know, that, you know, you ever participated in. You know, mm -hmm. one could argue, that was one of the most talented teams in North Carolina history when they, you know, cause if you think about the, the starting five, Marcus, McDonald's all American, Joel, McDonald's all American, Theo, was it Theo? Mm -hmm. or Justin? Theo? It's Justin, Justin, Justin. Justin, all McDonald's American. all American. You, McDonald's all American. Yeah. And then <laughs> you had Bryce who was top 30 in the country. Yeah. Then you had Isaiah, McDonald's All-American. <laughs> Theo, McDonald's All-American. Yep. You know what I mean? Nate, Nate was top Nate, 40. top 40. Yeah. You know. Thick, man. We had a stick for sure. That You know, like, for me, yeah. wow. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, think it's, I think it's only one team that, that may rival that. Like, mm -hmm. Those guys, one team, I think that might have been the 93 94 team with, with uh, Derek Phelps, McDonald's mm -hmm. All American, Donald Williams, McDonald's All American, Brian Reese, McDonald's All American, uh, who started the four that year. It may have been Kevin Salvadori, maybe it'd be at the four, mm -hmm. um, top 50 player, Montrose, McDonald's All American. Uh, Larry Davis, top mm. 40 player. Jim McGinnis. Players, players that you forget about. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Jeff McGinnis, 
McDonald's All American. Yeah. Jerry Stackhouse, McDonald's All American. Rasheed Wallace, yeah, McDonald's All American. They seem crazy in ours, though. <laughs> you know, yeah, that- when you. <laughs> well, you you know that that team kind of yeah. lines up with that team when you you know you look at that, and so yeah. it's it's one thing is you know it's 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 interesting because that team lines up with that team, mm-hmm. and you guys well you guys made it to the you know on to a final shot and that team they lost to Boston College, mm-hmm. and so here it is the next year going into your senior year losing Marcus, mm-hmm. losing uh, Joel, mm-hmm. losing. Bryce, you know, what was the mindset? Because now you are the vocal leader. There ain't no question about it. There ain't, ain't no if, ands, or buts Nobody about what's it. going on. <laughs> yeah, you are the vocal leader of this mm-hmm. team. So what was the thought process? Uh, explain to the people what was the thought process of yourself in that role and your thought process for that team. I think the the just not having that feeling again was was – we had such a fear of that that we didn't want to feel that again. You know, we wanted to um, go into the next season with with no question that we're the best team, we're the best rebounding team, we run the fastest, we're the well coached. You know, uh, I know we're in college, but still carrying ourselves as professionals. And mm-hmm. you know, uh, so we came back to school early, actually from our break, and got the work in, and everybody's lifting and. I don't think anybody stayed back home. I think we all came back and put that work in. And I think it was just such a great feeling of that, that it transitioned all the way through the season. Like, just remember, we came back early to put that work in so we can be here at the end. On the last Monday night, and Coach kept telling us that and instilling that to us every practice, you know. Because, you know, after every practice, we running. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't care if you win, lose, anything. you got to run. So uh, we just wanted to keep that momentum going um, because we knew that we had made it there for a reason. We're a good team, you know, um, so why can't we do it again? You know, we still got some most of our core guys. Uh, we lost three of our core guys, but um, we had other guys that stepped up, you know, Kenny, Theo, um, Joel Berry. Um, when Marcus left, Joel definitely stepped up. Um, so I just think it was just all the collective that um, just wanted it so bad that we wouldn't take no for answer, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, like, for me, I never knew how spoiled I was in in, in retrospect to, like, you know, like now, I you know, I hear a lot of people, of course, I'm older, you know, like, man, you played in three Final Fours. And, and I'm thinking about the Shaman Williams in college it was like, I didn't know anything better. You know, I didn't know any different. Exactly. So, so now when you look back and you say, okay, I was in the Final Four in 2016 in the in the championship game. And now I went right back. You know what I mean? Like people don't understand how hard that is. And when, you, when you're in it, like you said, I don't want to feel that feeling. You know what I mean? Think yeah. about how many other people out there that don't want to feel the feeling of just losing in the first round first of the tournament. Round. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who just, who just want to make it past the first <laughs> round. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, right. you know, think about, like, you know, you have to sit back and think about what you actually did mm-hmm. and say, and then, and then to put it, you know, then to, you know, to, you know, to put it in, in motion, you know, yeah. so, you know, like, so how was it for you when you guys, you know, you had a great season. You moved through the NCAA tournament. Here it is, you're in the final eight game, and you got to win this game to get to back to the final four because you don't have a chance to not have that feeling. You didn't get that. You four. don't get to the four. <laughs> got to get there. Got to get there. <laughs> well, you know, we had Kentucky in our way, to be honest, and and like, I feel like w- once we beat Kentucky, like we had in our mind, like it's nothing else that's going to stop us from winning. Like, it's it's no way we we can let Oregon or Gonzaga beat us. It's just not a – we just – we basically beat – those are basically the one and two teams in the country, us and Kentucky, you know. Right. Uh, once, we, once we transition from that game, I just think our mindset was just like, you know, like we can't let nothing stop us. We can't let the ref stop us. We can't let us missing shots stop us. We got to always – Go back to that muscle memory of 
us in the gym and putting that work in and it's gonna fall through. I just I just it just was destined to happen. I just feel like deep in my heart, I just feel like it was gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it, it was quite interesting. That elite, that, elite huh? eight, that elite eight game was definitely the toughest game of the tournament for sure though. Yeah. I mean those two games, I mean it was it was I mean you know just you know, Memphis. We were Memphis, right? Memphis. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just watching those games and, you know, and really getting to see some great basketball. I mean, I mean, I remember having a talk with C.D. McGrath um, in the uh, in the the little restaurant in the, in the hotel. And, and mm-hmm. I was and talking to him. And I said, C.B., y'all never run zone. Y'all never run zone. And, uh, and I said, hey, man, you know, you know, depending on how this game go with Kentucky, you, know, you might want to look. You might want to look <laughs> at his own. And I think it was like two or three minutes left in the game. Mm-hmm. Y'all ran zone, and yeah. I looked down at CV, and I was like, you know, he was like that. Yeah. That those few zone possessions kind of changed the game. Yeah, yeah. It, it it threw them off because it's like mm-hmm. what? Because <laughs> they because because I mean, you know, coach ain't really trying to do that anyways. He's trying to man up and. For us to do that, it definitely showed growth from our team, you know, because we didn't want to go zone either. You know, we oh, like, really? dudes ain't, we're not going zone. What you mean? You know, you know how it is. You're like, man, yeah. we're not about to zone up. We straight man to man, you know. And uh, when we did that, that definitely um, made a difference because, you know, it gives a lot more people on the boards. It gives you a lot, a better chance to um, get them transition points. And, man, we, we just, we just kept at it, and you know, Luke hit the big one of the biggest shots in shots. In, 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 yeah, yep, yep. And so there it is, going to the final four, and getting there, and 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 playing, and and being there, and getting down to those last few seconds, Kennedy. Mm-hmm. You know, when did the realization of I am about to be a national champion? When did that begin to seek in for you? I think honestly, for me, when we got back, it when we got back to the hotel after the game, and I saw everybody just like, I was just like, man, <laughs> like <laughs> you know, like just like, wow, we really our lives have changed forever. Like honestly, I really felt that. Like you know, and, yeah. if, if, and when you look on the court, uh, if you look back at the video when the time went out. I didn't even like celebrate. I was just like, just standing there, just like, what? Like, you know, like, and Brandon and those guys came running up to me, but um, it was a surreal moment, you know, like a, a, a moment that I never thought that I would feel, you know, just because, um, you know, we've been through so much as players and sacrificed so much. And for that to be how it ended is just like, just unbelievable, man. Yeah, man. Story, yeah. storybook ending, man. Storybook yeah, exactly. ending, man. Exactly. exactly. Storybook ending, man. I, I, I was so, I was so happy for you guys, man, because, you know, it's, you know, not being able to win one, but then being able to vicariously watch, you know, like I said, the, if the younger brothers did it, man, hey, man, I, yeah, it's, it's, it feel, it feel like I did, you know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody, you know? somebody asked me uh, the other day, like, how you feel that Armando cash on rebound? And I'm like. It, Records are meant to be broken. Like, you know, it's it's that's a part of the game. You know, I I love Armando as a player. I love him as a person, you know. Yeah. And every he has, he has questions, he know he can hit me up or talk to me if he's going through something. So as long as we got that relationship, it's cool, you know. I'm I'm yeah. I'm all good. I mean, I mean, you broke Tyler Hansborough uh record for rebounds uh-huh. in the tournament game. You yeah. know what I mean? So tournament. So I mean, like I said, you know, records are made to be broken. You know, yeah. it's just you know, did you do you? You know, you did what you needed to do to help your team be the best team that it could yeah. be. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. And so, I mean, it, it was just it just awesome to see you guys so, you know, uh, so happy, but also yeah. be able to put yourselves among, you know, among the greats. You know what I mean? You know that. I mean, and, you know the craziest part, though, right? So, <laughs> you know, like we used to say. <laughs> You don't got no banners up there, right? That's right. So that, our, the whole season, we like, dog, once we win this, we're going to come back. They can't say nothing. Say nothing. <laughs> so when pick up and pick up Shaman, I'm like you. 
<laughs> I'm like, you asked them. They're like, what's wrong with him? I'm like, nah, it's not going down like that. Like, bro, the, right. the freshmen go get the balls if they go down the court. It's our ball. I don't care what you're talking about. That's just the lesson we gotta learn. That's just the lesson we gotta learn. I ain't gonna be here. I ain't gonna be here all season. I'm just here for a, a couple weekends. <laughs> hey, you already hey, know. Hey, that's what the people wanted to hear when I asked you about your freshman year. See, yeah. hey, see, because a lot of times people think that we just be talking, and so no. it it so to hear every every player yeah. that we have on here, they talk about. Just that. This is just how this thing go. That ball yeah. roll, freshman, you better go get. It. And if I call foul, it's my ball. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Yeah, you yeah. win something, then you can do it. Yeah, yeah. You know and 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 the thing, you know what I mean? For me, you know, for me, we never won a national championship. You yeah. know, I never won a national championship. So, you know, to challenge you guys, like, exactly. Shit, be be better than me. You know exactly. what I mean? Like, shit, be better than me. Exactly. Do what I couldn't do. You exactly. know what I mean? And so, you know, to see and you fact, guys. And the fact that you want that for us says even more, you know? Oh, sh- man. I, like I not told a lot of people, Because not a lot of people do that. Oh, remember, like I told I told y'all before, like I said, it can, it can get misconstrued, but I wanted it for y'all. Yeah. If I wanted it for anybody, I wanted it for y'all. You know yeah. what I mean? Because, yeah. you know. I mean, I love my experience. My time was my time. I enjoyed it. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I enjoy, I enjoy being a conduit for you guys. That you yeah. know, I enjoyed exactly. that. That's what made exactly. me be there. And so mm-hmm. for you guys, you know, like uh, I remember, uh, I think it was Theo. Theo say, "Ah, my banner shine a little bit more than yours." And I was like, "Yeah, it does. Yeah, <laughs> it, it does. Exactly. You know, yeah. you you got a spotlight on yours. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? But like you said before." It's it's like having a record bro. I, I don't I'm not upset about that. I'm I'm happy. You know what I mean? I'm because straight. it's all under the Carolina umbrella. You know what I mean? It's, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, man, if they you, look good, we look good, you know. That's right. And, hey, I want them to be better than me. I wanted you guys to be better than me. And exactly. and, and I, I was happy that you were able to, to do that. And so <laughs> and so with that being said, this this is my toughest question now. Mm-hmm. You have to give it some thought. This is the toughest question that I ask. Yeah. When it's all said and done, mm-hmm. and and you know we're we're removed from maybe this earth, or, mm-hmm. or you know, and somebody's going back and they look at that national championship, and they look or they looking in the the book, and they go by and they see, they get down and they say, Kennedy Meeks. They see that name. They see mm-hmm. that photo. What do you want people to say and to know about Kennedy Meeks? Well, first, that I'm a champion. That's first and foremost. But, you know, like, all jokes aside, I think um, being a good teammate is is so important to me as far as um, having an impact uh, within the locker room, you know, because that's where it starts at. You know, if, if it's not right in the locker room, it's not going to be right in the court. Um, right. So I want to be known for as a great teammate first. Um, as far as basketball, um, I want to be known as someone who um, never backed down from a challenge. Every time coach had challenged me to um, become a better player, I responded um, the best way I could. Um, and he will tell you the same thing. Um, I will also um, uh, want to be remembered as um, a child of God. That's important, of course. Um, that's that's really first and foremost. Um, and I tried to carry that throughout my whole career, you know, just keeping God first and making sure I give thanks to him um, because I would not be here without him. Um, my family wouldn't be here without him um, giving us this opportunity. Even with this interview, you know, it's still a blessing. Um, mm-hmm. after all these years, I'm six years removed from college and um, we we still doing interviews. So um, it's a testament to um, how I wanted to um, perceive myself to everybody um, in the Carolina Nation, Tario Nation, everything. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Um, I, I, I'm going to say this. I'm proud of you. Um, not because you won a national championship. That's, you know, that's, that's, uh, you know what they say. That's, uh, that's gravy. That's yeah. gravy on the plate. Yeah. I'm proud of you because of the person that you, you are. Mm. 
the person that you've Thank always you. been. Thank you. And you've been consistent in that. Mm-hmm. And you are an example of what these young men need to strive to be mm-hmm. as I'll an be- individual. Yeah, you know what I mean? You. Like, yeah. man, you, you know, that there, there aren't many people that I hold in high regard when I talk about them as people. Mm-hmm. You are one of the top five people, persons that we've ever had part of our institution. Thank you. I man. put you up there with Sam Perkins, Hubert Davis. Yeah. Um Webb Tindall, uh, you know, just, and that's not saying other people are bad. I hope yeah, you don't no. it's the wrong way. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Just, just who you are mm-hmm. and how you've carried yourself and the example that you are, you know, for me, it, it, it makes it easy for me. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of like, you know, you can, hey man, hey, hey, you know, because we all are, are, are examples in some form or fashion, but you know, it's like, hey, follow that young man. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes we get removed at our age or we're just not as as cool or something, whatever the case may be. But you are a person that, you know, people can tell their children, hey, follow that young man's path. That lead the way that he is, the way he is as a person. And mm-hmm. and and I commend you, man, because that, you know, that there there aren't a lot of people that um that hold that prestige. And like mm-hmm. I said, not saying that they're bad people. No, I'm not yeah. saying that at all. I'm just saying that you, you just on a different level yeah, and uh, make sure you continue to, to, to understand that that's, that's needed yes, and sir. that's important. Mm-hmm. And that's a responsibility. <laughs> you know what I mean? Really? Really? <laughs> you know what I mean? A lot of times people don't see the responsibility that comes in, in the things that, that God has placed upon us. But you know that that there there are people that emulate you, that are people that appreciate you, and they don't always have to be younger than you. Yep, exactly. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, you know, uh, you know, that's that's why I love you, man. And that's why I hold you and so I like I got I got to see you briefly when they did the thing for us Friday and Mm -hmm. that 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 game and and I was kind of like, dang, I ain't get to you know, I got to see you briefly, you were doing something and I was doing something, I ain't get to just sit and rap with you because you know mm-hmm. i used to i used yeah. to be able oh. to sit and talk with you yeah. and they you know what yeah. i mean but mm-hmm. you know you know life happens but I, I i'm just i'm just ecstatic and happy for you as a person and uh i know that you're going to be a great father and mm-hmm. uh i know you're going to continue being a great example for these young men at the university of north carolina Absolutely. and in other environments as well so Thank yeah you. so yeah so Ladies and gentlemen, I, I want to give another hand for the great Kennedy Meeks for participating and, and spending time with us here on the Carolina Conversation. And uh, Kennedy, man, God permit, we'll catch up with each other here uh, in, the, in, the, in the near future. Mm-hmm. And if there's anything that I can help with or anything you need, yep. you know, hey, man, you can always hit me. Yes, sir. Got you. All right. Love you, young brother. Love Take you too. care of that little girl. Yes, sir. Y'all be blessed, man. Absolutely. I'll hit you up. You have a great evening. Thank you.